Thank you for joining me today for Just Checking In, an opportunity for us to touch base with leaders around the world, pastors, evangelists, missionaries, and we've had some great conversations. And today will be no exception. My very special guest today is Dr. M. Thomas Propes, who is the director of Church of God World Missions. Dr. Propes, welcome to Just Checking In. I'm anxious to hear what is happening with the 365 Challenge, Church of God World Missions, how God is moving around the world. But let me begin with this. If my calculations are right, you are in about the first 300 days or so of this tenure. Yes, sir. And you made a very bold promise at the General Assembly. I was standing right beside you on the stage in front of God and everybody. <laughs> and you said you were going to give regular reports. I believe if I'm remembering right about every 100 days yes, and you have done that. Thank you. And here today we find ourselves at about the 300 day mark, getting ready to go into our camp meeting season. Uh, fill me in, what's been going on? Thank you, General. First of all, it's a delight always to be with you and thank you for your ongoing partnership. You've been inextricably tied to World Missions, what we've been doing globally, and your support and your endorsement has helped us cross the finish well, line. You. So on behalf of the entire worldwide team, God bless you and thank you for that. I am excited to be able to fulfill the promise that I did in fact made, as you say, in your presence, the entire church and God himself, <laughs> that between 90 and 100 days since the General Assembly, we would give a detailed report on how our partners have been blessing us and partnering with us to help your vision to win the last day harvest in our lifetime. If you remember, I said there to you that we believe in World Missions, that we can provide your administration with a vehicle that will absolutely win yeah. this last day yeah, harvest. You're doing that. And we believe that we are. As we, as we get ready, we're on the precipice of camp meeting season. In your camp meetings, we have sent this trifold to every state, every state overseer. It will be available to all of our constituents in the Church of God. Uh, you, you can see there, open it up. It, it gives you the final 300 day report to date of what we've been doing in Church of God World Missions globally. I have the team to pull the stats. You will see this there, there's a QR code. If you just click it, you'll be able to see videos of what we've been doing internationally the last 300 days. Here's the exciting part, I know, I know you will embrace this. In World Missions, not including the USA and Canada, but globally since the General Assembly through May 8, and we had to put a cutoff date there to get it ready for, for our camp meeting report. In World Missions, 1,422,863 brand new members oh, have joined the Church of God, God through our indigenous churches yeah. globally. And I know this is near and dear to your heart. 1,623 newly credentialed members, Fantastic. most of them under the age of 25 oh, years that's old. That's exactly where my heart is. And I know that you have made an appeal yeah, yeah. that you wanted a new Fantastic. generation. So we're doing our part. We've pledged and we're doing our part. New churches planted through May 8th. 509 brand new Church of God congregations God. organized. Praise God. Salvations, 149,209 confessions mm. of faith through Church Man, of that's God what it's all about. World Missions Ministries. Holy Spirit baptisms, 49,917 who have, as we used to say, prayed through the <laughs> baptism of the Holy Ghost. Water baptisms, 57,200 water baptisms. And here's where our partners really come in to support what we're doing. Total amounts received just for the 365 challenge, not counting the plethora yeah. of other capital projects, right. but just for the 365 challenge, $904,924 oh, wow. wow. and one penny 
total faith promises. Now get this, nearly 92% of all of our faith promises are always paid in. Fantastic. $680,913.88 with a grand total through May 8, $1,000,000. Five eighty-five eight hundred thirty-seven dollars and eighty-nine wow, cents. To incredible. God be all glory. Well, to God be the glory. Absolutely. Amen. But I also want to applaud, applaud you, Dr. Childers, and your entire team, which is a wonderful team. Thank you. That that just flow all of this, and, and for being responsible to get the information to our donors. Right. I so appreciate that so much. That was an incredible statistic, if I called it right. Uh, over 90% of mm. what is uh, pledged, right. or we call it a faith promise, right. that has come in? That, that historically does come in, yes. That is an incredible statistic, and it says so much about the faithfulness of people. It says a lot about, you know, if we say we're going to do it, we're going to do it. And you know, uh, Bishop Propes, what continues to be a hallmark thing for the Church of God and the Church of God World Missions to be able to say is that we do not take out of any of those donations. Not a dime. Any administrative fees, any administrative costs. I don't know that, there, and there may be, I'm gonna give my room, myself room for exception. I don't know, however, that there is another organization that does that because it is, it's an accepted thing, it's done with many credible uh, ministries that uh, a certain amount of administrative cost mm. is kept out for, for mail, for uh, television production, whatever the case may be, we don't do that. The Church beauty of, of our tithe of tithe structure. There you go. And it's been long standing. Yeah. Thank God for that. We don't have to do it. We did a study recently. We won't name names now, but we did a poll of every major not for profit organization in America. Mm -hmm. And the report that I received on my desk was exactly what you just said. Yeah. We may, in fact, be the only wow. not for profit ministry that does not do that. Incredible. No administrative cost. Yeah. Every dime you give goes to the project. Every dime you give goes to the ministry. And I would say that helps build that number of over 90% of what is promised comes in. Absolutely. People trust Church of God World Missions and they trust you and your leadership. Uh, wow, I'm overwhelmed because that is such a powerful report. I don't know too many people that give a report with so much energy, passion, and anointing as you just did right there. I'm almost ready to go to the altar after, <laughs> after hearing that report. Let's, let's just uh, lay that aside for a moment. You know, when I hear a report like that and I hear you give it, I hear that passion. And, and that's, that's who I know Thomas Propes to be. I've known you a long time. Long you time. and I used to ride golf carts together <laughs> at youth camps in South Georgia. We did. Swatting gnats while we were Absolutely. going through. Absolutely. What, what drives you? What, what makes you want to get up in the morning and, and come and do this work or pastor the church, a great church you built, uh, state overseer work? I knew you as an evangelist. You and Laquita were traveling all over the place about the same time Paul and I were. That's right. What, what drives you, man? You know, I am a traditionalist in the most positive sense. Yeah. I love the tradition of Scripture. I love the tradition of our faith. I love what my mother and father, my grandparents instilled in us. I've often said that I am and Proud, uh, as my mother would say, keep it a sanctified pride. <laughs> but I'm proud to be fourth generation Church of God. This is all I know. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I did some, some other secular gigs, as we would have said back in the day when I was a teenager, trying to find myself, trying to find my calling, trying to find the path that God and, and my mother prophesied that, that I would take. And I kind of pushed back on that. but. I got out of bed one day and I just embraced it and I said, this, this yeah. is what we, we do. This yeah. is ministry. Yeah. God has called us and subsequently, um, uh, you know, it, it, it's passed down to, to our son and we, we yeah. believe to generation after generation. I believe God calls families. That's right. I just absolutely do. But to see in this last day harvest, I love so much your vision 
to complete the last day harvest. Yeah. And see, some, some whispered to me as I started catching your vision, some whispered to me, you're living in a fool's paradise. We cannot finish the Great Commission in our lifetime. And although I didn't publicly push back, I, I, sure. I, I did in my spirit because yeah. I believe we can. Yeah. Yeah. We've got the mechanism. If the church of God, and this is what I said at the assembly, if the church of God, our tribe can become laser focused and pray every day just a little bit for the favor of God to rest upon what we do globally. That's what it takes. The, the laser focused prayer, the favor of God, because I believe, and you've heard me say it, one touch of God's favor changes everything. And I believe we're in yeah. a season of favor. Absolutely. I know what I don't bring to the table. I know my limitations, but the team that you mentioned that God has helped us put together their energy. And they kind of use me as the break. I, we, we've brought in a bunch <laughs> of young folks and they're, they're millennials and younger and they got it. They're techie and they're pushing and I'm pulling back and somewhere we meet yeah, in the middle. Yeah. And that creates a passion, a synergy that is getting this thing done. Yeah. But that's what drives me. It's that inner calling to do what I can do for this season God has given me to lead this great ministry for. Well, and it's very obvious, uh, Brother Tommy, and I love you for it, love Laquita Thank for you, it. General. You know, since we've been sitting here in the last uh, few minutes, uh, I've been reminded that you and Laquita built a great church in Hinesville, Georgia. We did. Running over a thousand people when that really wasn't uh, b happening that often, that no. much. No. Uh, passion for the Great Commission was part of that. You had a you had a tremendous ministry to people that were in military back in those days, right. and from there God has taken you and just to prosper your your faith and your ministry, and you've done such a great work. But in the last few minutes that we've been sitting here, I've heard you mention your mother at least twice. Yeah. Uh, Jewel was her name, as I recall. Good memory. Uh, uh, you tell a story, and I, I want to end with this because it always moves me deeply, and I think it'll move the people that, that listen. Uh, very, very unfortunately, uh, your mother, uh, as I understand, uh, maybe dementia or maybe even Alzheimer's. I, I'm not sure what, what it was. You can tell that. But there is a moment in that experience that God miraculously allowed her to speak into your life. Tell that story. My mother was diagnosed with age-related dementia. And it, it, it progressed to the point where she didn't know me. I'm an only child. The most difficult thing at that point that I had been through was uh, the mother who put so much of the church and faith and who we are spiritually into my spirit, such a strong uh, person in my life to not know me anymore was almost devastating. Yeah. I was overseer of South Carolina at the time and I would make periodic trips. We'd leave Greenville and go down to Waycross, Georgia. She was in Baptist Village there. And, and the doctors had said every now and then she might have a moment of clarity, but don't expect it because her decline was accelerating. And oftentimes I would sit there with her, hold her hand, kiss her on the cheek and talk to her about things of years ago. And every now and then she would, she would, would recall, but typically she would sit there slumped and I would talk and I would talk and I would sing to her and we would pray, I would pray. I'd been going through some things. Summer at that point had been, uh, she had just gone through a, a, a terrible hemorrhagic stroke. Laquita's mother, Low Ray, had been diagnosed with a terrible disease. We were, we were seemingly being bombarded as a family. I was at a low point. No one had influence on me yeah. like my mother, <laughs> sure. spiritually. And I looked up and she was there. I saw a twinkle in her eye and something came from my spirit. And I had asked her this question before I realized it. I said, Mama, can I really trust God? She looked at me with a strong clarity of voice and she said, Honey, you can trust him. You can trust him to the bitter end. Wow. 
and she slumped back again and mm. she never spoke to me again in this side of eternity. Mm. I took that that day as God showing up and showing out in my life and reminding me using the voice of my mother who could not heretofore communicate to say, son, you can trust me to the bitter end. Wow. How many times have you gone back to that? Hundreds. <laughs> hundreds of times. Wow. Wow. What a moment. What a moment. What a moment. And, and you and Laquita uh, walked the very uh, sad road of uh, one of your children passing away. Summer, yeah. Beautiful yep. summer. Yeah. And you've been through some things like we all have in ministry and raising a family, directing world missions, being on the executive committee. I can only imagine, uh, Bishop Tommy, that there were moments when that voice came back into your heart and your spirit. And that was God's way of saying, I've got it every time and in every situation. You may not know how it turns out, but God's got it and you can trust Him. I want you to take this moment and uh, speak any other words you want to say to pastors that are watching right now and then pray for them, would you? Thank you, General, for this opportunity. Someone asked me not terribly long ago, how do you navigate all this? And I think that's what you were, yeah. were, were saying. And I said, without thinking, it's a matter of the heart. Yeah. You've got to get your heart right. You've got to keep your heart right. You've got to yeah. guard your heart. That can yeah. be tough in today's culture. Yeah. But if I were to say to this vast audience that's listening and watching today, for all of us, from the general overseer, who you know I love and honor and respect, from your officer, all the way through the church, we have to guard and protect our that's heart. Right. Because from our heart ushers forth, I believe, who we are and the favor and anointing of God so if I had a message, it would be let's all guard our hearts, protect our hearts, keep our hearts right before God because the day will come yeah. when we will stand before Him. And I want Him to be able to see that I've had a pure heart. Amen. That's my daily prayer. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for Dr. Tim Hill, our general overseer, beloved general overseer, who walked the very path that I'm walking now before me. And I pray that you will bless him and strengthen him and guide him and guard him in the coming days. And for all who are seeing this and viewing this and hearing this today, I pray that you will place a new yes. vision, yes. a new inspiration, a new passion, a new anointing in their hearts and help us to always keep our hearts pure and guard our hearts and help us, O oh Lord, with your divine favor yes, to win this generation because we believe that Jesus is soon coming. We want to be ready. Hallelujah. We want to take everybody with us. In the lovely name of Jesus Christ, amen. we pray. Amen wow. and amen. Wow. Thank you, Bishop Thomas Probst. As you continue to lead the ministries of Church of God World Missions in 187 nations around this world, let me encourage you to be a part of the 365 Challenge. You may ask, what is that? Well, that's just the Great Commission every day. Every day. Every day of the year. Living it out, praying for Church of God World Missions, giving to Church of God World Missions, knowing that your gift is going to the harvest. Thanks so much for being with us today. We'll be back again for another session of Just Checking In.